Yeah, I actually thought it might have been that. Nah, 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 nah. Hey guys, welcome back. Another week of blind wine tastings. Sometimes always hooking this up again. Uh, if you want to get 10% off all of the wines that we taste on the show, check in the Discord down below in the link. That's where we give out the little code each week. Uh, but for now, let's hop straight into it. All right, wine number one, we've got a white wine. Uh, looks like we've got a few white wines this week. This is as like near crystal clear as you can kind of get a wine. How many times do you think I'm going to say this smells like Chardonnay? This doesn't, but I, ha I reckon at least three of these I'm going to think is a Chardonnay. Not really jumping out of the glass too much, but it's very pretty. It's still like a really, really, really elegant example uh, of white wine. It's not really animalic or anything like that. This is the antithesis to that. This is just divine. Cool. Yum. Like, I really like it. It's got this really cool, like, kind of white nectarine, fleshy fruit character, but it's still saline. It's really mineral and taut. You do have a fair bit of that lemony sort of citrus flavor coming through. I think it's Australian. I definitely think it's a New World Australian white. If this wine were a color, it would be beige. Uh, it's, <laughs> I'd part with like maybe eight, 18, 20 bucks. I'm gonna go 18 bucks. Look, yeah, I mean, I, I would probably buy like three bottles. Uh, I don't think there's anything, uh, again, you know, great about it, but uh, maybe cannon fodder, cannon fodder wine. It's orange wine time. It's got this like cool, really light kind of apricot hue. Have we had this wine on the show before? Is this like a different year's vintage? That is marvelous. Finishes on honey, like it is honey all the way through. Yeah, super apricotty and stuff like that. It's a bloody well made orange one. That's really kind of what it is. Uh, price range 40 bucks. 40 bucks for that. It's like a, or like a lemongrass, you know, grapefruit kind of smell as well. 35 bucks on this. Uh, and look, I buy six. Bit of complexity there as well. Some interesting kind of flavors kicking along, and there's that kind of cool little acidity running through. Uh, really good wine. I'm gonna take another three bottles. It's really nice. It's, I think, I, I like it more than the last time we had it because it's really familiar on the front of the palate, but I remember it sort of getting a bit barnyardy, like funky on the back end, which it's not doing right now. Okay. All right, we've got a, another orange wine. That is grassy and herbaceous. On the nose, nothing super jumping out at me. Almost a little bit, uh, well, big shout out to Dylan. I know you hate it when I use terms like this, but a bit brioche actually. Um, smells brilliant. And I do think there's some, either it's Sauvignon Blanc or something earlier harvested. It smells like a rainforest. You know, it's like mossy and moist. It is this really interesting, bright, perfectly picked nectarine flavor. I am all about this. I would drop $38, I wanna buy 12. It has the acidity that that other wine lacked. It has a lot more excitement going on. Uh, whoever's made this has really thought very carefully about not just the aromatics, but actually how like the tangible sensations on the palate with this one. Um, class act. So there's now a microphone in front of me because they're doing some sound testing. <laughs> I've got some big doof doof bass going on. Um, so yeah, if you can hear a little bit of background noise, funnily enough, we've just moved this and they've actually <laughs> turning it down. Instantly, I think it's gonna be a Chardonnay without even smelling it. It's Chardonnay, no doubt, no doubt. Put it in writing, Chardonnay, put it on wax. I don't even need to taste it. We've got a little bit of oak going on here and I would hazard a guess that Henry thinks this is Chardonnay because of it. <laughs> you can smell quality oak from an absolute mile away. God damn! Yeah, look, if that's not Chardonnay, I've not learnt anything over these weeks. As it turns out, I've just been getting really, really lucky. Now I'm nervous that it's not. I'm gonna say Old World. I don't think it's Australian. Maybe a little bit more expensive. Uh, it is really nicely put together, so I'm thinking maybe around 50 bucks a bottle, potentially. Lockie, stop nodding. I know it's all bullshit. Wow, that's fucking cool. That's a really interesting flavor. It's like 
musky and herbaceous, and it is beautifully aromatic. Uh, I would almost hazard a guess that this is maybe like a musket Zabibo derivative. Whoa, this is cool. I really like the smell of this. It's like a fresh cut tropical fruit, but none of the like standard stuff that you'll find in a fruit salad at Coles during July in Adelaide. Like something that you're on holidays and someone's like, here, have this. And you're like, man, why haven't I been eating more dragon fruit? Woo! Love the tang, great acid, kind of little tart sour number. Floral, sweet fruit. Um, and that taste does really sit at the front. Like when you're tasting it, uh, that's really prevalent on the front of the palate. High acid and it is scrumptious. There is a crunchiness to this wine that I find really, really appealing. I think it's French, why not? And in terms of pricing? 38, uh, 38 to 40 uh, bucks for this, and I would definitely buy 12. That is, uh, yeah, another really good class act, very good thrilling drinking. Cool, wine number six. Ooh, it's pretty, ooh, it's pretty. Quite conventionally made, I think. Similar to the last one, it does have quite a prominent um, sweet sort of smell to it. It kind of smells like one of the Unico wines that we make, and they haven't slipped a Unico wine in here yet, but I'm sure it'll happen one day. Yeah, I'd probably grab a dozen of that, to be honest. Depending on the price, I guess. Though. There is an amazing little phenolic grip, back palate grip. It could be like a Gruner. It could be like a really early harvested Adelaide Hills Gruner. Now, the last one wasn't Riesling. This is fucking Riesling. Surely, surely. I've called Riesling so many times in the show, I don't think I've got it right once. Um, but this is great. Uh, 12 of these. Yeah, 12, which is kind of, I, I'm, I'm imagining this might run concurrent to um, what the other guys say. I've bought a lot of wine, actually, on this one. Only because, uh, for me, cellaring is a huge part of, of my personal enjoyment for wine. And I have uh, seen examples like this uh, go in incredibly well. Uh, in the cellar. But um, let's see what the other guys think. We're all back together uh, and we're going to talk about these six white wines that we've all tried. Um, Whitish. Whitish. White White. -ish. White. 50 shades Asterix. of. Asterix. <laughs> um, wine number one, let's start with this one. What did you think of wine number one? I thought it was really cool. I thought it was a really like impressive either, you know, like Sanseri or Alsatian Pinot Gris or Sauvignon Blanc, or if it's done in New World, excellent. What do we got, Luck? Three six. Great, awesome value. Four dollars off, let's go. Value. What do we got? So we got it's an Aussie Pinot Gris. Corn, Garuna. Garuna. There you go. Textual. Textual. Green is one of those other ones that really sits within that sort of boundary of it could be freaking anything. Like yeah. it we, could be Pinot Gris. We've been fooled by this one oh, before. Go. Um, oh, I got notes. We yeah, got no. Notes. So the, where have so, been the whole so, time? So you know what's fun? Um, I went to I went to pick up all these wines from Sometimes Always, and they were like, "We're sick of you not knowing the variety." So here are the fucking varieties. <laughs> 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 um, it's great. It, you know, as far as Gruner goes, it is Canon Fodder Gruner. It's pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Twenty six bucks. Yeah, bit of a bite. Next up, wine at number two. Now, I thought we'd had this before. Oh yeah, we probably had something like it. I reckon. Yeah, I actually thought it might have been that. Nah, 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 nah,
the classics. It's got to be. It's got to be. It's got to be Chardonnay. It's got to be. It's just got to be. Firmly lock this <laughs> down gotta as be. Chardonnay. And if it's not Chardonnay... Get new hosts. I don't know. I don't what know what it could be. An uh, over something or other. But yeah. uh, after you consume this and know this, you're allowed to say, Oh, this Chardonnay is looking good. Because yeah. you now have a benchmark. <laughs> you now have a benchmark. <laughs> yeah, it tastes that is good, bro. Benchmark. It tastes a- great. Absolutely that benchmark. Is benchmark. Um, how much is a Lockie? Oh, no way. That's awesome. What is up? Oh, Mards. Absolute Margaret River. Damn. Nocturne. Cool Shit, name. Dude. Cool Margaret name. J. JNA language. I'm, I, I, I know what I'm buying. Yeah. Uh, I'm literally writing this down to buy for myself. Nocturne. Uh, uh, get uh, it done. 2020. Celery. Wine number five. This was probably my favorite for wine. I thought it would be. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. It's, yeah, it was really interesting. Like, super. Like, aromatically, it was very yeah. strange. Yeah, I think a lot of barrel, like like a bit of time on lees. It's got a bit of a lease. It's kind of got a Fiano like thing going on too, to be honest. Well, if it is, it's great. And I already said I want twelve bottles of it, and I want it for thirty dollars, please. Yeah, oh. twenty eight. Th- uh, yeah, I wanted twelve bottles of this. Dude, we got a clean sweep. Dude, oh, let's go. Dude. <laughs> I'm on thirty eight bucks. I'm going big money on it as well. I'm more than happy to spend for it. Let's it's go. very yummy. What, what do we, we got? got? Hey, cool, cool. Dredgy again. It's, is this dude just continually like putting out just his banger after lines? After banger after banger. That's Chardonnay. Is it Chardonnay? No. It's, it's a gold. So this is, he's, he's got a what new gold. What's, what's Chardonnay, Chardonnay Musk. Musk? There you go. So it's a um, Chardonnay Musk is a variety that I imagine is must be a cross with the musket family. Oh wow. So, that, so this is Chardonnay just... Musk. One number six. Oh, Eden Valley Rizza. Yeah. Epitomized. I, I had, had that kind of Aussie Riesling style thing. It was Lemon delicious. pith. Phenolic grip. And it looks like white. It looks like water. It looks like what? Yeah, it's, that it's is amazing. so clear. Yeah. What, what have we, we got? Got? Has he got? Is it Eden or is it somewhere else? Is it. No, is it Pitbull! It's Pitbull! Oh, damn! It's Pitbull! How sick! And the music picks up. <laughs> <laughs> um. What is it? So this Pickle. is a um, southern French variety uh, from the Languedoc Roussan, which is like the the French version of the Riverland. Heaps of grapes, um, lo- like low quality, pretty cheap. Uh, but this is a really cool variety because it's high in acid, doesn't need any oak or anything like that. So there's a little mm. bit of in McLaren Vale, and this is Mirage Street of Clouds, which is I can't remember. That. It's, a, it's a partnership. Bene- Benice and Julie. Fuck, that is an absolute six pack and a half. Yeah. I am happy. That was cool. And I'm broke. <laughs> well, well, you keep buying wine from us. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thanks so much for joining us again this week, guys. We'll be back with more wines and taste and more incorrect opinions. But until then, see ya. Ciao.